Hi, welcome to another Substance Designer graph walkthrough. I'll break the material you see here in Marmoset for you to understand it easily and maybe come up with your own variation. Here you can see the full graph in Substance Designer. I'll try to go through the graph as fast as I can and if you have any question you can ask me in the comment. Here I generated a custom shape and I used the tile sampler to make a grid of 4x4 four four with some color random and the result was put in a edge detect node to create the silhouette of all the tiles, the big and the smaller one. I then used a float fill node to generate different grayscale gradient for each tile. I then modified two of these gradient with two gradient map that I blended together to isolate the damage on the border of the tiles. And then I multiplied this last one float fill to gradient on top without any modification to not have all the tiles flat on a single plane. Then I went back to the edge detect and ran it through a bevel node that I used to multiply it on top of the tiles. This made the basic pattern. Now into the decoration. I made in designer an ank symbol starting from basic shapes and I use the tile sampler with a mass map to have the ank appear only in the location of the bigger tiles. I then subtracted the result from the previous high map and that was done. Now on the chipping. Here I have a paraboloid shape and I made two different variations with the transformation to D. I ran all of them in a non-uniform blur to offset the brightest part thanks to the asymmetry slider. You can see the effect moving the brightest value to the side. And then I used a directional, a directional warp with these bands to warm the basic shape from before. And all three of these were, were scattered with a tile sampler. And subtracted here from the high map. And that you can see here generates all these indentation. I then wanted to create more damage on the borders of, of the tiles. To do that, I used a slope blur base scale with a with a fractal sum base set to the half of the resolution. You can see here in output sides, I have minus one. This is a way to reduce the effect without using a blur node. And then I I blended the result with a in dark and blend node over the original with a mess that I generated thanks to a edge detect node that I inverted and luckily blurred. And this basically makes half of the graph. Now we go into the scratches. I I saw this technique used by Vincent de Rosier. I will link his profile in the description. I just scattered random lines with the tile sampler and set them randomly with a directional warp with a really high intensity. And as an intensity map, I use this grayscale I made with the float fill to random grayscale. Now it's time for the for the cracks. This is another pretty standard technique. I use the circular splatter to generate some random points and I fed them in a distance node to generate a Voronoi pattern. I found the edge 
and bevel them, warped a bit, again with the same random grayscale from before, and yet again with the eye map. Then I blur them with the black and white spot free with the output size set to minus two and minus two. It's the same trick from before. Now to uh, the more interesting part of the cracks generation. I blurred the result and multiplied it with a perlin noise and then I use these as the slope in a slope blur grayscale and this gives me the effect of inflating the cracks but not everywhere and that's why I multiply the perlin noise. You can see if I remove the effect of the perlin noise I lose some of the detail in the cracks. And if I remove these, they look less interesting. And integrated them with the, in the high map with the multiply node. The sand is the beginning of the sand material I already made so you can see that video if you want basically I generate some stripes that I warp here and here and I blend them together with a random mask and then I blur and adjust the levels I then Blur, I map of, of the stone tiles and I overlay it on top of the sand and also the directional warp it, warp it a bit and copy it on the top of the sand and this gives the impression of having some of the sand displaced by the tiles underneath. Pebbles now. Pebbles are created with the same technique for uh, I use for the chipping with a tile sampler and I merge them with the pipe blend node so I have this mask for later use. The only thing I want you to notice here in the pebble generation is here under color parameterization mode I used the scale instead of the default color input so the smaller they are the darker they get so the bigger one will have will be higher than the smaller one and in the end it looks more believable and that's basically it for the high generation. Just quickly in the normal map, I use the custom node made by Daniel Tiger to add speckle to the sand. Now I'll be done roughness. I try to keep those quite simple. So for the base. I started with a curvature smooth and I overlaid on top a curvature two, two times, one slightly blurred, to have all the details pop so I can have a better control in the gradient map. Gradients for uh, tones are quite easy, just take some reference image and you can use the peak gradient and then you can just adjust and delete delete or add the various color. I try to keep in mind some color theory and I move across the hue and saturation and value but not going too crazy and I also use some 
complementary color. Again, here a gradient for the stand that I made with a auto level to access all the range. And HSL to saturate all the pebbles that I blend on top of the sand and blend it all together with the mask I got from uh, from before from all the high map high uh, height blend this mask for pebbles this mask for uh, the sand and the tiles and this is the final result for the albedo the roughness start similarly with the curvature smooth i could have used the curvature from here just to save a node then i inverted the curvature to have shine shinier edges because you see they are we have darker so they will shine more and use an auto level to have the full uh, spectrum of value to work in the in this gradient I adjusted the gradient according to my likings this took a bit of time and then I then I adjusted a bit the level and used the range node to make an overall adjustment to the to the roughness of the, the material and lastly I added the scratches with this map we this mask we generated before to have all the scratches rougher than the rest of the material and lastly I overlaid the speckle mask to have a lot of variation in the roughness of the sand and make it shine shine less and more based on the angle of the camera and that's basically it for this material and if we change the input input pattern and we adjust the histogram select we can modify all the the result and everything will still working Here back in Marmoset, this concludes today's walkthrough. Please let me know if you find the kind of walkthrough useful and see you at the next material.